I don't know if you've noticed, but Baldur's Gate 3 is quite rightly enjoying a lot of attention right now. Not only is it the closest someone like me with a limited IRL circle of friends who live nearby can get to a D&D night, it's also a very, very good game. Part of that appeal is that you can be anyone, and the game will naturally adapt to those initial choices. Whether you want to be a big green orc, an elvish warlock, or anything in between, there's very little that's actually off limits. And yet, I'm here to tell you that you should be playing as a scruffy looking nerf herder. I'm here to tell you, you should try playing Baldur's Gate 3 as Han Solo. Or really, any video game, TV, or film character you can think of. It doesn't have to be Han Solo, but he's the poster boy for a roguish, cheeky, self-serving, standoffish but heart of gold kind of hero you can't help but love. In his place, you could use Star-Lord, Indiana Jones, Nathan Drake, Flynn Rider, you know, from Tangled and plenty of other characters that fill the same archetype. One of the hardest things to do when building your film, TV, or gaming character is matching up the stats with the lore. For Han Solo, we went with a lot of charisma. Someone that might occasionally talk their way into trouble, but be able to shoot their way out. We opted for the criminal background too. You know, just so we could constantly remind people that we'd done the Kessel Run in... Uh, I mean, so we could tell people how much of a cool baddie we were. Getting to play a hand-type character relies on being able to shoot first too, and for that reason we opted for a rogue, allowing you to use underhanded tactics, but the morality is less questionable because we do it with a smile. At least that's what we're going for. It doesn't hurt that the Han Solo character creator was devilishly handsome as well. Which brings us to the key point of the video, really. Why does playing as your favourite TV, film or video game character feel so right in Baldur's Gate 3. Naturally, there's no right way to play, but by giving our protagonist just 10 strength, he's not likely to completely overpower adversaries in combat, meaning he's always looking for improvisational ways to survive, which meshes quite nicely with the game's focus on environmental damage and combat flexibility, while also making sure that stealth is important at the start of any encounter. As always, as the best laid plans often do, like shooting one's way out of the Death Star, it always breaks down into a mix of skill with a weapon and a pretty high degree of luck. Every encounter feels less like a victory and more like a series of fortunate events that somehow end fortuitously, particularly given Baldur's Gate 3's sometimes nefarious dice rolls. In one early scene, we were taken captive by an assailant and failed the dice check to escape using words and wit alone, only to headbutt the character at the last second and get to safety. One combat encounter saw us tackle a huge enemy from behind, only to run the hell away when they turned around, leading to us perched atop a raised platform while we waited for backup, our fur clawing at our feet the whole time. It's that kind of ridiculousness and escapism that makes playing a character like Han Solo so much fun in Baldur's Gate 3. Taking an established character and putting them into a game they have no business being in made me play my character so much differently than I normally would, which meant I got to see dialogue options, cutscenes, and character interactions that me on a normal playthrough would just never see or hear. But it got us thinking even further about how much fun it would be to roleplay through a Baldur's Gate 3 playthrough as our favourite characters from the rich world of film, TV and yes, other video games. The absolutely ridiculous levels of character customization Baldur's Gate 3 has means creating different character models based off of them is easy enough provided you have the time, and the different races and backgrounds make it a breeze to match characters up so that they're lore accurate, which is very, very important, obviously. Imagine creating a Dragonborn character based off of Spyro the Dragon, for example. He's a little guy who loves flaming and headbutting people, so why not go for like a wild magic barbarian so you can throw a bit of magic around while you charge into your next victim? Or a hard-hitting monk fighter multiclass with the pirate background to live out your One Piece dreams as Luffy? Or steer into the fantasy skid and roleplay as half the Fellowship of the Ring? The possibilities, as they always seem to be in Baldur's Gate 3, are pretty much limitless, especially when you're playing with your friends. You could literally roleplay as Luke, Leia, Han and Chewie and live out your best Star Wars fantasy mashup adventure dreams. All the Guardians of the Galaxy with your mates will let you decide what builds they might come as, but keep in mind that while Rocket can't use magic in the film, the amount of technology he has access to makes him a wizard in my eyes. You'd just have to make sure you're playing as chaotically as possible and you'd probably be in the right ballpark. Look, Baldur's Gate 3 might have been out for a couple of weeks now, but it has consistently blown us away with the amount of player control it offers and frankly, with new mods being added every single day, it probably won't even be that long before DMs are running their own custom campaigns through this thing. It's a game that lets you be whatever you want to be, and that is worth celebrating. And if you're still looking for more Baldur's Gate 3 content, because, well, why wouldn't you? Check out this video, where we prove that you need to play as the Dark Urge in your next playthrough.